Hi, welcome to Cottage Industry Fibers. My name is Kim, and I am Continental Kim on Ravelry and Instagram. And I'm Kristen. I am, who am I? I'm Come to Silver on Plurk and Instagram. I don't think I said that before. I am on Instagram. Come to Silver.com, and I'm KBell on Ravelry. If this is your first time watching the podcast, thanks for checking us out. And if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. You want to go ahead and kick it off with some whips? Yes. Awesome. Let's see. Last time I showed you that I was working on a Herbert Niebling. I have gotten some progress done on that. It's slow going, of course, but it's it's a bit bigger than last time. Believe me, it, it is bigger. <laughs> <laughs> it looks bigger. Yeah, it's bigger. Let's see if you could see the uh, the leaf pattern there is coming along, getting into this netting pattern up there which I think is pretty that's cool so, that's coming along good I'm excited I'm actually a little worried that it's not going to be quite as big as I hoped it would I know it'll stretch out a lot but the one that I showed the picture of on the mannequin mm -hmm. I think she knit those on threes and I'm knitting on twos so it's going to be a little bit smaller but that's okay I never really wear shawls anyway so yeah <laughs> You don't knit terribly tight though. No, do you? I don't. So, I actually okay. I, I knit pretty much right on gauge usually, mm. so cool. yeah, I'm one of those people, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> I always have to go down mm. no, I have to go up a needle size because I knit tightly. Yeah, so that's that and that's pretty much what I've been knitting on. And um I haven't been doing a whole lot on my um what's it called the via jante mm -hmm. i haven't done a whole lot on it but i remembered something that i wanted to tell you about if you remember i'm knitting it out of out of malabrigo lace which is it's a single of merino it's just a single spun not plied or anything and something i noticed this is still the first ball but i the ball was getting pretty small but you know when you put it in a cake and you're pulling the yarn from the outside or from the inside, the outside of the ball tends to, it can get a lot more friction over time and it was actually felting, the just the ball from being in my project bag, it's just a cotton project bag and it was felting, I was getting, you know, where, you, where you, you're pulling the yarn out and it's like right up around the top of the cake, it was starting to pull and I would have to actually yank those apart so what I did is I, I rewound it into, into a ball to protect, you know, to prevent that, because now I'm working around from the outside of the ball instead of the inside. Plus, I put it in a plastic baggie. I know I have this thing against, I have a thing against Ziplocs. This is the purpose for them. Well, this and sandwiches, I guess. Okay. <laughs> and chips. And cookies. And cookies. <laughs> cookies. <laughs> Kim makes amazing cookies. These are her chocolate chip oatmeal cookies. You should be jealous because they're the best <laughs> cookies ever. And she brought them to me today. <laughs> well, don't tell my husband I gave some away. She didn't give me any. <laughs> you did not see anything. Anyway, what are you getting at? Oh, sorry. Okay. I put it in a Ziploc bag, and next, and when I get to the next ball or cake of yarn, I'm going to keep it in the Ziploc bag because it's going to reduce any friction around the outside of the ball. So, if you're working on a yarn that is a, is a single, or if you notice that it's starting to felt around the outside, do that. Put it in a Ziploc bag. That's what they're good for. And cookies. And cookies. So and but uh, the ball is a good idea, too. Yeah. Because, well, I don't, I really don't want to hand wind a whole, you know, a whole yeah, thing. Because like, that's like 500 yards or, mm, or more than that. I don't remember. But, so, mm. I'll just put it in a Ziploc and... You know, hopefully that'll minimize any friction around the outside of it. If you wind it on your ball winder and then put it in the Ziploc, what if you take the yarn from the outside? Could do that too. That might actually be a good idea. Yeah, and then you won't yeah. have to put then it in a hand wound ball, but you can at least at least pull from the outside. Yeah, it. yeah, that's a good idea. I'll do that. Cool. It's not. It it didn't really make a big deal. It's not like it really affected the knitting any. It was just more of a you know, irritating because you're knitting and then you feel it jerk and you have to stop and, you know, pull it off the ball. So, mm. and I don't like things that irritate me. <laughs> so, so me anyway, either. that was that. So, I haven't really done a whole lot of knitting, just working on that, that Herbert Needle, which I'm loving a lot. It's a lot of fun. I love knitting, knitting lace. I 
do too. And I realized the other day that I have not been knitting any lace for like weeks. Well, you've been spinning up a storm. That's why. Well, and I'm trying to get that cardigan done, which I guess I'll just jump into my whips. Yeah. Um, I only, oh, now we laid everything out and I didn't take out my projects. <laughs> so we hopefully wouldn't have to go grabbing into bags now, while I'm we're trying. Talking. I'm trying this thing called organization in my craft room. Well, just for the podcast. Just for the podcast. <laughs> not like regular. No. Not real life no. or anything. <laughs> okay, so I've been working a little bit. This is just my, you know, purse knitting. I got a little bit further on my um, Motor Lodge vanilla socks. And, you know, I had some free time at work and, you know, wouldn't go out or something. I really only got like another, what, inch done or something on that. A couple stripes. But I really love how those, I love those colors. I'm super yeah, happy fun. with how that's coming out, and hopefully I'll um, get one sock done sometime soon here, and then move on to the next one and have have them to wear at some point. What base is that? This is just um, it's Bad Amy Knits uh, eighty twenty stripey sock. So it's it just looks a, very shiny. It's, yeah, it's just an eighty percent merino, twenty percent nylon. Should be the same one you've got. Yeah, I'm sure it is. But it just it looks. Shiny. I don't know how she does colors that look like they glow. Mm -hmm. I wonder if partially that's because it's lighter in the center of the stripe than it is to the edge of the stripe. Yeah. But almost all of them look like they literally they, glow. They do. Yeah, it's that gradient stripe. I love it. She does such beautiful, beautiful dyeing. If you hear a funny, like, clicking sound, or I'm spinning with my uh, Joy and my uh, Wooly Winder kind of wobbles a little bit. It's not really... That, that might be what you're hearing. Did you figure out, did you change bobbins? Did that help at all? I did. I, I don't think that it was the bobbin. Oh. I told her I, I, when I started this project I'm on, I noticed that when I started spinning, my tension was changing, you know, like without any explanation. Just I'm spinning along and it would feel like it's pulling hard and then it would stop pulling and couldn't get the tension right. But I, I really think that it's because I'm knitting lace and I was right up. It was a new bobbin. I was just going to ask because I didn't realize how fine you're yeah. spinning that. That, you know, possibly, like you said, so so it's not doing it now? Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's um, For people who are looking to spin, I know we're jumping to spinning real quick. We'll look at this closer in a little bit. There but goes my organization. Thing. No, no, you're good. It's good. <laughs> hey, this is the way things work. Right. We, we got an idea of what we want to do, and then we just go where we want right. to go. But when you're spinning really fine singles, um, for whatever reason, I can't tell you the science behind it or why it doesn't like to be on the, the more narrow core of your bobbin, um, but it just seems to spin better if you enlarge the core of your bobbin. Now, some, some wheels have the option of, of having like a lace flyer and, you know, lace bobbins where the core is just made larger, but... Um, what a lot of people do is they'll take a, what is it, like foam core? Mm -hmm. It's like, it's the insulation that goes around your pipes on the outside to keep them from freezing in the winter. Mm -hmm. um, and they'll cut some of that and they'll put that around the um, core of the bobbin just to make the whole diameter a little bit larger. And it'll make spinning onto that bobbin easier when you're doing really fine lace. Yeah. Because when, you, when you're working with fine lace, the tension... The pull-up feels a lot stronger than it does if you had the tension set the same and working on a thicker yarn. Like right now, I've got the tension on this almost all the way non-existent, and it still feels like it's pulling pretty well. So, And you even have your tensioner, that's just fishing line. Yeah. Because I know some people have gone to like this is super fine fishing line for the lace. This is what I'm spinning. Yeah, can you even hear? You hold it up there. I'm going to put my hand you see? Oh, oh no! <laughs> it's okay. I'm just. I always do something that makes me go <gasps> during the podcast. It's not a big deal if your if your single breaks. And here's a lesson on if your friend breaks your single. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a big deal. No. You just kind of pull some out and let the twist um, unwind. And then I'm just going to bring my fiber. I'm going to lay that single on the fiber and I just want a very fine web of fiber right there at the tip. Oh. 
something like, I don't know if you can see that. I'm not putting my hand up there. Yeah. <laughs> it's really, it's not a big deal. <laughs> and then just start spinning it again. And you're just grabbing just a few little hairs, a little bit at a time, until you get back to your regular thickness. I couldn't, it's so then, fine though, I couldn't feel it. I didn't even know it was touching my hand yet. And then it's, you know, no big deal. There it is again. So, anyway, that's what I'm, I'm working on. I forget why we started talking about spinning. Because of the noise your wheel was making. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so it's the other <laughs> came in here. So. so the other project I've been working on knitting, um, I, after the last podcast, it was almost a full week until Tour de Fleece was going to start. And I had just finished those skeins that I showed last time. And I didn't really want to spin anything. I didn't want to continue on in that project because I was at a good stopping point and I wanted to pick it back up when Tour de Fleece started. Um, so I had a lot of time just to knit, although one of those days I couldn't take it anymore and I did spin a skein of yarn. I forgot to bring it with me though. But I did like fat singles so they, it spins up pretty quickly that way. It was like it was like I was jonesing for a spinning and I had to spin something. Yeah. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I put that fiber on the wheel and, <laughs> and got it done real quick. But um, the rest of the time I was working on my Lock Street cardigan. So I've gotten quite a bit further along with the back. Um, you can kind of see the cable pattern coming together now. Um, I've gotten past the part where you do the waist decreases and um, working on the last row or two of um, where you increase the bust shaping. Excuse me. So, um, yeah, I've got about, I want to say five more inches to go before the sleeve, something like that. Um, but I'm really happy with the progress that's coming along. I don't think it's going to be a problem to get it done in time for Rhinebeck. Good. You were so, panicking about that. I was. But after having enough time where I was focusing on one project. Mm -hmm. That's the problem, is that I get so distracted by other projects that... And that's not the only sweater you want to finish before Ryan Beck. Either. No. I want to do this one, and I want to do my hand, my two hand spun sweaters. Yeah. So, but this one will take the longest to knit because it's cabled. Although, the white one's going to be cabled, too. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see what I do with that one, because there's a pattern I'd really like to make. But I'm not sure I'm allowed to make it yet because it's not yet released yet from my friend the designer. <laughs> so I'm trying to convince her to let me make it. Hint, hint, you know who you are. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so if I can't make that one, I might make a different one because I should have plenty of yarn to make that one down the road when yeah. it actually comes out. So, anyways, but anyway, though, that's that's as far as I've gotten with that. Like again. Uh, like I said in the other shows, this is a Lock Street cardigan. Don't remember who it's by, but you know, we'll put it down there like normal. And then um, I'm knitting this out of Woolmise DK in my, uh, on my signature, signature size 7 circulars. And that's really all the knitting I've done. Because then I got distracted by spinning. She's been doing a lot of spinning. But you do your finish objects okay. next. Uh, you've seen this. But it wasn't blocked yet. This is my Sardinian shawl by Karina. Picnic Nicks. Our, our friend, our the, designer. friend the, des the designer. The designer. And this is blocked now. This is the Sardinian all, oh, yeah. all blocked. That's a good size. Yeah, it comes out so nice. The, the pattern, how it blocks out, is just really, really pretty. I wanted to block it with a scalloped edge that kind of would go along with the, you know, the, bo the pattern there in the middle. But it was, oh, it was difficult. I tried blocking it for like an hour, and then I was like, ah, screw it. I just used, used my lace blocking wires to get straight edges, and then did a curved edge around the, the edges there. Which, you were right, it turned out wonderful mm -hmm. anyway. So, yeah, yeah I really like it. Yeah, like it's that. a good size. I'm happy with this one because the one color shawl that I've actually wanted to wear was a black one, and I didn't have one. And I've I loved this pattern when Karina when Karina put it out, so it's nice. 
It's very nice. That's going to be lovely. You can wear that. That's the problem I always run into is when we go to a show or something, we have all these colorful shawls, but they don't necessarily match any outfits that yeah. I wouldn't want to wear. Yeah. So, you know, you've got the shawl, and then you're sitting there trying to pack and go, mm -hmm. I want to wear this. You need to knit. Wear... You, you really do need to knit yourself a black shawl and a white shawl. Well, I saw, um, who was wearing, I want to say... <sighs> Pretty sure it was Leslie on the Knit Girls. Mm -hmm. She just did this really adorable lacy kind of vest. So well, I think it had sleeves. But it looked, because it was so lacy and kind of full, mm -hmm. it looked more like a lacy wrap mm -hmm. than a... I'm not describing it very well. I'll have to look it up. But I think I'd like to make one of those in black. Yeah. You know? Um... Because my problem is I always have, I kind of have slope sh sloping shoulders, so I always have a problem with a shawl, like, slipping off mm -hmm. my shoulders, and it just irritates me. Yeah. So I think if I had something that actually pulled over, you know, armholes, I think it was, like, a vest with no sleeves. Mm -hmm. um, but it was really pretty and lacy at the bottom, and I really liked it. I should make something like that. Or a uh, bolero. Is that what they're called? Which is, like, just the, the mm -hmm. sleeves over your shoulders? Yeah, where it's a little short cropped th mm -hmm. little sweater. Mm-hmm. I think I'll do that when I lose, like, half my body weight. It's a good plan. <laughs> That's a good plan. <laughs> I like it, too. <laughs> Sorry, I was just bringing something. Oh, that's the wrong thing. I was bringing something up here. Well, that's very pretty. Mm -hmm. Let me show my my spinning. Yeah, go ahead and Look. show your spinning. I'm trying to find something on here that I meant well, to bring up. I showed up. you what I'm working on. I think, what, two podcasts ago, I was telling you I was trying to finish my my loop bat so that I could work on this fabulous color by by uh, Nitty in color. It's kind of this rainbow just super wash. It's so much fun and when it's spun up it looks even brighter spun up. It really does. <laughs> than it does here. It's like highlighter colors yeah. all over the bottom. I'm excited. It's The colorway is called um, rainbow snow cone. So that's what I'm spinning, and I am about two thirds to to three quarters done. So, with the spinning, I'm spinning it in a super fine single, and then I'm going to Navajo ply it. So keep the colors together because it does it changes from yellow to orange to pink, then back to yellow to green, and then to turquoise, and then it goes back to green, yellow, and back that way again. That's so pretty. It's going to be pretty. Do you think you could lift it up so they could see it on the bottom? Yeah. Because it is so cool. I'm sure that, I think the colors are probably going to show better on the actual recording. Is it focusing on the... Yeah. Yeah, it's doing good. Yeah. That's going to be so awesome. Yeah. I'm pretty happy with it. I'm very happy with this one. The spinning is going very well, and it's staying very consistent. And... I'm working on this as fast as I can because I have noticed, I'm sure you've noticed how wonderful Kim's spinning turned out, turns out always. It's always just even and fluffy and while well, I can Some spin cycle. a single, I can, <laughs> I can spin a single very well, but my problem is, is that I will get half of it done and get distracted and start doing something else and then, you know, like three months later decide I want to finish spinning that. So I finish spinning it. And then when I go to ply it, the new stuff looks great, and the stuff that has been sitting on the bobbin forever does not look as great. Case in point is this finished loop bat. So first I'll show you, like right here, see the blue and green? It turned out pretty well. But the older stuff, the pink and peach, looks horrible. I think it's going to knit up great. And I don't know if the singles are overspun, or they just sat too long, or the ply is underspun, or I don't know. But half of the skein looks great, and half of it looks like crap. So <laughs> it does. It's okay. Everybody makes mistakes, but I really, I mean, the fact that the the older stuff looks bad and the newer stuff looks good, I really think it's because it sat on the bobbin for so long. Yeah. And I did soak it. I soaked it for like two hours. I, you know, soaked it in hot water. When that cooled off, poured it out, soaked it again in hot water. Didn't help. If that happens again, 
what you might try doing too when you're plying. Mm -hmm. If you have one that you know has sat on the bobbin for like a really long time mm -hmm. and then you started it back up again. Mm -hmm. um, what you can do t is you can try plying it. I mean, it won't help with the part that you just finished spinning, mm -hmm. but um, sometimes what happens is that that the singles get so rested that mm -hmm. they get used to being in that that place and that will get re-energized when you get it wet but if you've plied it um right like if your bobbin's right there and you're plying what twist is in there can't travel mm -hmm. across the single as much because there's a short distance between where your mm -hmm. bobbin is and where you're actually plying it under the wheel so you might try if that ever happens again it, it sounds weird but finding a little table or something to put your lazy Kate on mm -hmm. on the other side of the room and then grab the single and bring it all the mm -hmm. way to where you're plying and that ex that long distance mm -hmm. between like where across the house yeah, yeah exactly will actually let some of that twist even out mm -hmm. along that entire single yeah and it's it might help it's just weird I mean some parts look like they're underspun and then other parts look like they're overspun and I, I'm not an inconsistent spinner. No, you're not at all. I guess we're done with that. Okay. <laughs> we put post-it mm -hmm. notes across the bottom of the table. We've got the camera on so that we can f like have easy to see show show notes. And one of them just fell off. So we're into done. the trash can. Into the trash can. So we're, we're done, done with, that. with that topic. <laughs> anyway, what I was saying. I mean, you can you can see. Yeah. It just. You know, some spots look like they're underspun, and some looks like it's overspun, and it's just very, very weird. Hmm. And, I mean, I'm not an inconsistent spinner, but, like I said, the start of this to the end of this did take a very long time, you know, because I didn't work on it co consistently, so. Hmm. Lesson learned. If you're going to spin, just work on it until you're done. Because this is going to be great. I promise. You should see it finished next time. And awesome. I'm excited, wow. So. For that fine of a single, that's that's a lot of progress done. Yeah, it is taking forever, though. <laughs> fine, fine singles will take a very, very long time. I'll tell you exactly how long I've been spinning on this. About one and a half seasons of Game of Thrones. <laughs> you just spin on it while you're watching Game of Thrones. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> My husband and I just started watching Game of Thrones a few weeks ago, so we've kind of been binge watching. We just finished. We're all caught up. Finished last night. But yeah, that's about about a season and a half. <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite so, a few hours. <laughs> so anyway, so that's what I'm working on. That's the finished one that turned out bad. I don't know. What do you think? Do you think I should put run it back through and put more spin in it? Or it do, I think it does need some more twists. It, but in just Okay, so what I would do, I would put it on your not lazy Kate. I'd open this up, put it Swift. on your Swift, yeah. Put it on your Swift. And do the same thing, put some distance between you. Mm -hmm. And start at the areas that you're worried about not being plied because even though it looks like it's over twisted mm -hmm. I don't think it is I think it's more under plied and what's happening is because there's so much twist in the singles mm -hmm. it's kinking up on itself mm -hmm. even though it actually so that looked like it was almost a little over twisted mm -hmm. but if you put more twist into it I think it'll let's see it still wants to kink up a That's little bit I'm, I'm not but it could just be set now yeah so. it might just need to even out a little yeah. so I'd maybe try that yeah maybe put a little more twist into the plot or maybe I'll just stick it in in a cubby up there and it can just be <laughs> it <will> decoration <laughs> pretty colors <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well um I've got some spinning okay a little bit she has a little bit of spinning so like I said it's tour de fleece and tour de fleece is where we spin every day that the riders on the tour de France are, are riding and um there are, for a period of about three weeks, there are two rest days. Whatever days the riders are resting, the spinners are supposed to be resting. And then um, there's also a challenge day where they ride up into the mountains. And if you feel like doing it, you pick a particular challenge for yourself and try to get that done on that day. Um, it's a fun event. It's a low-stress event. It's, you know, do what you want to do. 
you know. I've been spinning a lot, but I'm not doing Tour de Fleece. There's just a lot of spinning going on right now in Ravelry because of Tour de Fleece. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think there's a lot of sales going on for fiber, and there's just a lot of inspiration right now, yeah. you know. Um, but I do have the same project I've been working on, mm -hmm. but I've made it to the last color. And the last color, this is Into the World, Superwash Merino, 40% Superwash Merino, 40% non-Superwash Merino, and 20% Silk. And this is the last color that I'm spinning up. I literally have less than two ounces left to go out of a 36 ounce project. Wow. And these are the ones since the last time you saw me. We started Tour de Fleece on the 5th. And today is the 11th? Mm hmm. Yeah, okay, just checking. Um, so from the 5th to the 11th, I have spun and plied this yarn. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> so this is like, I looked it up, but I'm going to have to pull it out. But see, it's a gradient. This is the color that's going at the top over here. And then this is kind of the middle color, which Can is where I... Some? Sure, that sounds good. So this is... Essentially what I did is this is one ply of Mercy Hardigan, no, two plies of Mercy Hardigan, one ply of Courtly Frogs. This is one ply of Mercy Hardigan, two plies of Courtly Frogs. This is all the Courtly Frogs colorway. This is two of Courtly Frogs, one of Amusing Anecdote, two of Amusing Anecdote, and one of Courtly Frogs. And then this is all Amusing Anecdote, which is the one I just showed you, but I still have a little bit left to do. And then you've got, what, three more skeins on this There's side? There's like six. Oh, six more skeins on but, this side. But they're mm -hmm. all, because of the blending, they're all like two ounce, two and a half ounce skeins. You know, um... Yeah, and we just talked about how much I've been spinning all of watching Game of Thrones. I've done maybe three ounces. But that's because you were doing <laughs> some seriously super fine... I mean, the singles on this are like... I don't know, they're, I think I'm been going for like a 32 wraps per inch with very low twist which means they spin up faster because they have a lower twist and then when I apply them they're a little bit softer and fluffier um, because those singles aren't compressed mm -hmm. as much but it spins faster when there's less twist in that single so um, whereas when you're doing something fine lace weight like what Kristen's doing not only does it take longer because there's less fiber in every single time you draft mm -hmm. But you also have to get a lot more twist yeah. in there so that it will hold together. Right. So in general, it just takes longer. It does take longer. But um, let's see. I, I pulled this up and I forgot to get the numbers. So since you saw me last, I did, let's see, 2.4, 16.2. 16 16.2 ounces in six days. That's crazy. Yes! I'm almost you, done! You are a machine! Well, like I say, it goes faster, though, because of the lower ply and thicker singles. Yeah, but... And a little bit of psycho. When do you sleep? Well, when I go to bed about midnight. <laughs> but, um, actually, what I've been trying to do, and this is important, last time I did Tour de Fleece, I started off really strong and then really faded, because what I was doing is I was spinning too long without a break. And um, what you should definitely try to do is, if you're going to be spinning for a while, um, try to get up every 20 or 30 minutes and go do something else. Mm -hmm. Even if it's for just a few minutes, five minutes, mm -hmm. um, I'd get up and throw in a load of laundry, or I'd get up and start dinner, or I'd get up and, you know, whatever I had to do. And just having that break where you take a little bit of time away from your wheel will mm -hmm. help with any sort of you know, hand ache or, you know, tendonitis or back ache. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing that I started doing too, which helps a lot if I'm planning on doing a lot of spinning, is um, a long time ago we went to a, sp a knit in public or spin in public and I brought my wheel and I brought my camping chair with me. Mm -hmm. Like my just a folding, you know, fold up camping chair. And I realized that I could spin comfortably in that chair, almost like reclined back mm -hmm. in the chair. And when I do that, 
it's much easier on my back and my hips. Yeah. So I can spin longer that yeah, way. Yeah, when I spin, I, I sit on the sofa. And I can lean all the way back, and I've just got my feet out there pedaling. It's a double treadle, and I've got the fiber right here in my lap, and it's very relaxing. Yeah, yeah it's. I think that's a lot easier to do for longer mm -hmm. periods of time like that. But, but that's it. That's all I have for spinning. Okay. So what's next? You want to do your fiber galore? Yes. Oh, wait. Real quick. I'm sorry. Yes. I was going to talk about my plans for, and see what you think about this. Mm-hmm. My plan for all that yarn, I keep saying I'm doing a less is more, but in reality, um, I don't necessarily want to do that pattern because the way it, it starts with, it's just a plain stockinette and I'm fine with that. Um, and then the edging up the side, the, up the, you know, cardigan band, the button band is really just like an I cord bind off mm -hmm. because she's trying to maintain the colorways mm -hmm. as you go through the, the yarn. I totally get that. Um, but I want a one, a sweater that's designed more like, like your Romy sweater mm -hmm. where it has the taller collar. Mm -hmm. And then I also want to do like a, a contiguous sleeve mm -hmm. instead of, um, a that, raglan sleeve. That's what Romy has also. Right. And then, um, I want to do it all based from Amy Herzog's custom fit program mm -hmm. so that it should fit like mm -hmm. perfectly when it's done. But I'm tr what I'm trying to decide is I made extra yardage so I could make a larger sweater. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I didn't bring the purple with me. The braids that I picked, the first, very first one or the one I f spun first, which is actually the bottom of the cardigan, is mostly purple, mm -hmm. like a deep purple. And that same purple shows up periodically in this colorway. This is that last colorway I'm working on right now. And um, it's going to be the top of the sweater. So what I thought about doing, instead of working, the Romy has worked where you do the button band at the same time as mm -hmm. you're doing everything, right? Mm -hmm. I like to do a button band afterwards mm -hmm. because then I can better decide where I'm going to put my buttons. Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking is doing a uh, provisional cast on and starting with that collar mm -hmm. into the provisional cast on with this color and then like let's say it works out that I'm supposed to do six inches of collar mm -hmm. only do five inches of that color and then knit down using the custom fit program and everything mm -hmm. all the way till I get to the bottom of the sweater it should end with that dark purple mm -hmm. And then pick up with the dark purple and do the button band and also pick up the shawl collar and add an inch on the shawl of the purple. That would be cool. You think that'd be okay? Mm -hmm. I'm just worried it would look a little weird with that extra purple on like I'd probably need to see the actual colors yeah. together. I'm going to take a picture tonight when I finish that last skein mm -hmm. of them all together. And this it, will be laying right, right next to the purple. The only reason why I think it might look a little weird is because while... The, the first colors that you knit, mm -hmm. you know, you have one solid of, of the purple. Right. And then it goes, you know, two Starts shifting two to parts more of a red. To, yeah, two to one, and then, you know, this one doesn't actually have that color in it. Even though you've got some of the purple in there, right. it's not going to blend with the red as much as the other ones do. You know what I mean? Right. No, yeah. Yeah, no, I know what you mean. I'm gonna, I'll lay them together. We'll yeah. figure it out. And either way, I could do a provisional cast on them, and I could still go back. Yeah, you could you could try it, and then if you don't like it, you could unknit it, and and wouldn't be the first time, right? <laughs> yeah, unknit things all I the time. I have no problem with, with <laughs> unknitting. My thing is, I I am notorious for just tinking an entire project or, or ripping it out, and people think I'm crazy. It's like I will finish a sock and don't like how it fits, so I'll rip it all out and start over. And people are like, "What's wrong with you?" And my thing is, is we knit because we like knitting, right? We don't like wearing, we like <laughs> knitting. Particularly you, you don't wear socks. Exactly. <laughs> Maybe that's why it's easier for me. <laughs> Never wear socks. Well, I have socks. I have worn yeah. socks. But they don't look good with flip-flops. I'm not one of those people. Do not wear oh, socks with yeah, sandals. No, no. Actually, it's a lie. I have worn flip-flop socks with flip-flops, 
but that was on the boat, it was cold, and it was just me and my husband, and he would not tell anyone, so of course now I'm telling everyone, <laughs> but nobody saw, so it didn't no. count. <laughs> you didn't take pictures or post them on right. Instagram or anything. Right, so didn't count. Good. My feet were cold. Pixar didn't happen. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. Okay. All right, so stash enhancement. All right. I do have lots of fiber. Remember last time when Kim was showing that wonderful fiber and I was like, that's coming to me. <laughs> I wasn't kidding. Here's mine. This is mine, right? Yes. You still that's have two at home. I still have two at home. Yeah. I think. Your husband didn't break into my house, did he? He didn't. Okay. I promise. Okay. My husband's a locksmith. I, I like to tell her that her yarn's not really safe. I just let her keep it because my husband's a locksmith. I could get in there if I wanted to. Of course, you already saw this, but this one's mine, so it's, you know, wonderful. I have to show it, because this one's mine. <laughs> but anyway, you saw that one. Okay, See, that's you, another one where the colors just, like, glow. It does. It, it really does. So what you haven't seen, what I've gotten, I got a knitting color. And actually, you have seen this one, because I've got a second one. You've, I've already shown you the other braid, but this is the second one. The other braid I bought at Stitches. Mm -hmm. This one I bought online, but now I have two of them, so... I love knitting color. I'm spinning knitting in color right now. I love their stuff. But I tried two new dyers that I've never bought from before. And Kim, what's my favorite color combination? Pink and green. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> or pink and silver. Or silver and blue. Like Tiffany blue, not just any blue. Tiffany blue. Tiffany blue. So I bought this because these, this is exactly my pink and my green. Just Seriously, look that. at her website and then look at that fiber. My website's like this color, yeah. So that the color with the greens like streaking through it. Yeah. This is from um, 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 woollybully.etsy.com. And this colorway... They, she says it's one of her most popular colorways. I can see why. It's called Peony. Mm. Like the flower. So I bought that. That is Superwash Merino, which I've told you before is my favorite fiber to spin. And then I also bought the same colorway in Silk Hankies. So these are the Silk Hankies. Very cool. Here's one of them. You know, one of the things they do on the Knit Girls podcast mm -hmm. is every month this year they've been doing, I don't think they're doing one in July because Tour de Fleece is going on, mm -hmm. but they've been doing uh, Expand Your Horizons, mm -hmm. where each month there's a different like challenge to try something new, whether it's a different breed or a different way of spinning things. And in August, they're doing Silk Hankies. Oh. So there'll be a lot of information on the thread for Silk Hanky spinning. So that might be I've, interesting. I've done Silk Hankies before. I like the finished project. I don't really like spinning it that much because if you've worked with Silk Hankies, you know it tends to get you know stuck to your fingers and everything. Mm -hmm. Wear lots of lotion. Make sure your nails are smooth and and it's fine. But I just love that colorway, so that's why I got that. And while I was on Etsy, I found. October House Fiber Arts at octoberhouse.etsy.com and I got this one. This I is love that color. Radiate colorway, which are they're kind of muted jewel tone colors. And this is Polworth and Silk. <laughs> but yeah, pretty colors. It's similar to that Arco. Oh, yeah. Cyrus. And then I also got some silk hankies from her. And this is the Monet colorway. Like the, uh, I'm assuming the water lily, Monet's water lilies painting inspired these colors. As you can see. I can't wait to see how those spin up. They're going to be so pretty. That's a, this one's a lot of, this is 33 grams. Wow. Of silk hankies. Uh, the other one, the peony colored ones, that was 42 grams. 42 grams. Yeah. So that's a lot of silk hankies to spin up. Yeah, silk hankies will go a long way. And let's see, from October House, I also got a free sample. This is Polworth, Polworth, 
Polworth. Polworth, yeah. And mohair in the seaside colorway. That was a free sample. And I forgot, I also got, this is a free sample from Gourmet Stash, which I was really excited about because I wanted to try her punies. So, that's a free sample. There's probably about a, I don't know, about ten, ten of them in there. And those are super fine merino, yak, silk, bamboo, sari silk, and angelina. So, there's a little bit of sparkle in there. That reminds me, I got something that I didn't bring with me. I meant to, to make like roll eggs and punies with. Really? I got little bags of silk sari mm -hmm. um, blends. So there's like sari silk and then also silk silk in them. Mm -hmm. And like one's purple and one's blue and one's another color. I can't even remember. But the other thing I got, glow in the dark fiber. Ooh. <laughs> we'll have to That'd make fun. Some and play with that and see what happens. <laughs> now, the. As, as far as I understand, the difference between sari silk and actual silk is sari silk is actual th silk thread right. that they use to make, you know, Indian saris with. And they're recycling. Yeah. Yeah. Or they use, like, the cut ends from when they're make, weaving the fabric. They mm -hmm. cut the ends. And I actually probably have a bunch of that stuff somewhere. Really? Yeah. That'd be fun to make We stuff. should go through all of my old fiber stash. That'd be cool. Yeah. So... That's all my fiber. These punies. Punies or punies? I think it's punies, punies. but I have no idea. These little roll eggs <laughs> will be perfect <laughs> for one of my other new stash enhancements. I actually, um, I love my Jenkins spindles. I've shown you my Jenkins before. And they're very hard to buy now because, you know, it's just one guy, Ed Jenkins, makes them. He hand makes them and they're wonderful. And everybody wants them, but you know he'll make twenty of them. And if he just put them up for sale, they'd be gone in two seconds. So in in an effort to make it more fair to people, he does a lottery where he will list all the finished um, spindles to go out, and then you can enter once on the one that you want. So you get one entry for one spindle and try your luck at that, which is fine. It's actually pretty, you know, it's fair. Mm -hmm. And last week he had some larks up, and I tried for the larks. He actually allowed allowed people to do two entries for that one. So I had my two entries in there, but I did not win, so I complained. And then a little angel said, you can have my lark. <laughs> <laughs> this little angel. <laughs> so I have a lark. Yay. I bought it from her. I, I, she actually, she didn't want to take money. She said I could buy her a coffee for it. And I'm like... It's a fifty dollars spindle, so I gave her fifty dollars for coffee. Yes, I didn't buy it. I gave her fifty dollars for coffee. But she <laughs> does stuff for me all the time. When we had just met, I mean, well, no, it was we'd maybe known each other a few months, and I was starting to spin, and I decided to spin a bat into singles, and I'm like, oh my gosh, how do I finish these singles? And she said, well, my husband made me this PVC pipe. Um, uh, oh, and why do I always lose the words? Did you lose it too? I did. <gasps> What's going on? Nitty Naughty. That's it. Okay. A PVC, PVC pipe. Nitty Naughty. She says, my husband made them and it works great because you can soak the singles around the Nitty Naughty because it's PVC. You can go in the water with it. And then out of the blue, like, that same day, she showed up at my front door and she goes, here, I have an extra one. And she just handed me a PVC Nitty Naughty. I'm like... Okay. <laughs> she thought I was crazy. We, we'd only met and we'd only known each other for a couple of weeks. Yeah. <laughs> but here, yep. I thought it was pretty awesome. She does a lot of stuff for me too. So anyway, but yeah, this is my new Lark. And this is, it is 24 grams of Bolivian Rosewood. The woods he uses are so pretty. Yeah. I don't know if that's focusing. Mm. But anyway, so that's the Lark and... Compared to the um, the delight, which is what I've shown you before, what I'm currently spinning on. So there's the delight, and there's the lark. So it's a bit bigger. It's also a mid whorl instead of a bottom whorl. So I'll put more fiber on this. This one is just about full. Probably don't want to put too much more on to that. I start a new new. Um, they call these turtles. Actually, oh. I can take it off now since it's since it is pretty pretty full. And while we're talking about Jenkins, I'll show you one of the great things about spinning on a Turkish. So, as you can see, as I spin, I wrap it 
on there. And in order to wrap on a Turkish, you go under, under one arm and over two, over two arms, and under one, over two. And that makes this pretty pattern. And I was telling her, you don't have to be all meticulous when you're winding so that it's, you know, is that focusing? I think, I think it is. Nope. Um, I can't tell. Eh, I think anyway. it's good. You don't have to be super meticulous. It just looks pretty. And one of the good things about this is you can take it apart. You know, the shaft comes right out. And then it's a little tight, but the arms pull right out. Is it attached to your starting thing? No. Okay. And then that's a ball of yarn ready to knit with or, or ply from. So that's the fun thing about working on a Jenkins and then you just put it back together and you start spinning again so that's why I like working on these anyway they call those turtles because they kind of you know if you can imagine kind of a turtley shape I think they're pretty very cool so and then you know you just put it back together and you're ready to start spinning again so this one this is the Delight. Turkish Delight is actually the first size. This is the Lark. And the Lark is not only longer, it's a mid whirl, but the arms are just a little bit bigger, so you can get more fiber on there. And then the good thing about this one is you can take the shaft off, which is this shaft, and replace it with this shaft, which is shorter, and turns it into what what they call the J. Yeah, I thought that was really cool when he did Which that is that time. A lot closer in height to the delight, but it, again, the arms are a bit wider. You're going to get more um, spin. It's going to spin longer. So, yeah, I just think it's nice to have those options. So that's my new, my new Jenkins. Yay! Thanks, thanks to Kim. You're welcome. And coffee money. And coffee money. We yep. need lots of coffee mm -hmm. to keep spinning. Well, now you can buy lots of coffee. Awesome. <laughs> I have a couple things I added to my stash. I'll just show real quick. Um, this is from Unwind Yarn Company. And this is the last braid she had of the Dexter colorway. And she's a big Dexter fan, so I felt a little bad buying it. Well, truth be told, I was a huge Dexter fan when Dexter was on and before the finale. The finale was not great. I never watched the, the finale. The finale was very disappointing. Was it really? So, you have to tell me what happened. It was well, not, not right now. It was stupid. <laughs> it was stupid. Oh, no. If you watched it, you know it was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> but anyways, one thing I was going to show, this is a really pretty... Um, braid where the base is actually a gray and white merino mixed merino so it's 100 percent merino but it's got you know various shades from the fleece and then um i think they're all grays actually i don't think there's any white in there but it's like light gray and then dark gray and then she splashed a bit of red onto it and i just love the way that it looked but one thing i was going to show and it's something i was experiencing with the into the world that i've been working with I can get this braid open. I don't want to open it too far. But um, when you get braid that's uh, fiber that's braided like this, there, whew, um, it has a tendency to compress a little bit. And that's not the same thing as felting. It's mm -hmm. just a natural thing. Um, it, it compresses down so that it is in the braid and it makes it a lot easier to get into the packaging. And But what a lot of people don't realize is that it's actually really easy to get it to kind of let go of that compression. If this were felted, it would not, you know, right. loosen back up. But all, if even if you just give it a little, and I'm not pulling hard, I'm just, I'm just, you know, straightening it out a little bit like this and not even drafting it at all. And that makes, and I'm sorry I'm using Dana's, but this happens to everybody that gets mm -hmm. braided. So, um... This is gorgeous fiber. 
just the fact that it is working and fluffing back yeah. up shows that it's See, good quality. Exactly. It's well, it's very well dyed. She does a beautiful job. Um, and just to show that you can easily fluff those braids. Look how fluffy that is now. It's gotten much, you know, l much less compressed. And if I wanted to, com you know, open it up even a little bit more, you can pull it to the side like this and then do the same thing. This is just to straighten them all back out a little bit. And now you have almost like it just came out, you know, from how it came from the processor, all mm -hmm. fluffy. And, and I mean, this is so mm -hmm. soft. It is. It's nice. Beautiful fiber. I love this colorway, and I can't wait to spin this up. Now, when you start spinning, will you start spinning straight from this, or will you pre-draft this even more? Um, I probably will not pre-draft this. I, I might split it down into smaller, mm -hmm. you know, depending on how much... I want the colors to change throughout mm -hmm. my spinning. I'll probably um, split it down so that uh, you know mm -hmm. I go through the colors faster. Mm -hmm. But I, I probably won't pre-draft, especially superwash fibers. I don't pre-draft at all mm -hmm. because pre-drafting will make it a little more slippery. Mm -hmm. And since superwash already wants to draft already, mm -hmm. if you pre-draft it, you might have a hard time controlling the mm -hmm. fibers as you're spinning. But I I, I do pre-draft. I usually almost always pre-draft just because, but that goes along with my spinning style because I'm a short draw. That's true. So I've got a good handle on the fibers anyway. If I was doing a long draw, I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't. And I like to do, even when I'm doing forward short draw, a uh, forward draw like that where it's a shorter draw than like a true, you know, pull back and mm -hmm. do a really long draw, um, I still like to draft out and let some of that twist go back into the mm -hmm. fiber. So so I don't want it to necessarily be really easy to mm -hmm. pull from my fiber supply because I don't want it flying out. I want it hand. to hold itself together yeah. essentially. <laughs> so but this is what I mean by splitting it down. You know, I can split it down like this. Most braids are, you know, they're very easy to split straight down the middle. Yeah. And because what happens is is what most of these braids are is they're actually um, you know, eight small pin drafted rovings mm -hmm. that have come out of the the supplier and then they've laid those eight next to each mm -hmm. other and put them into this this braid uh, not braid but into this roving um so then once this fluffs back out a lot of times you can see where those different mm -hmm. pin drafted rovings were so it's it's easy to um split them back it's down. gonna be pretty i'm really excited about yeah. this one I was thinking about making it into punis and just and spinning it like that, but I can't decide yet. Yeah. I don't know. It's probably the finished yarn's probably going to be a nice mauve, mm -hmm. burgundyish mauve. That's what I'm looking forward to. Mm -hmm. I might, I think I might just do it like this and make a two ply because there's some neat hand spun projects out there that I really like to do that I only need like a two ply for, mm -hmm. and I think that would be really pretty because I think it's gonna like you're saying. I think when plied it's going to look almost more like a semi solid mm -hmm. so that's going to be gorgeous again that's uh, the dexter colorway from um, unwind yarn company and then i also have this one which is going to be hard to see the colors but this was a special color release from hello yarn and it's called black on holiday and um it looks really dark in the bag but though that's not black that's like super purple. deep purple <laughs> with orange that's pretty so if you, oh it's going there we go so let me put these two together so you can see is it on the camera so see it's like a really deep eggplant purple and then like a burnt orange and then it goes into some gold shades and tones and and these lighter areas, I think, I think it's going to spin up really It's like pretty. a sunset. Yeah, but I think I'm going to have to do this as an end ply or something to try to maintain the colors. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I want it to barber pull that orange and the purple together. Mm -hmm. I think it would be pretty, mm -hmm. and I've seen people who did it. But me personally, I mm -hmm. think I want it to be maintaining yeah. the color changes. I think that'll be pretty. So... I got that. That was like a super fast update. Literally, it was gone in 
less than Hello, a minute. That's Hello Yarn? Yeah, it's yeah. Hello Yarn, and her stuff goes really fast mm -hmm. anyways. But this was, they did an inspiration where three different dyers had the same photographs, and then they each oh, that's made, cool. mm -hmm. yeah, they each made, dyed something based on those photographs. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. So she only had done, I think, 80 braids of this colorway, and that was it. And there was a limit that you could only get the max of four. Mm -hmm. So... You know, if everybody got four, that means only 20 people were going to get to buy. Yeah. Now, not everybody got four, um, but it was mayhem. How many did you get? She got four. <laughs> I do big projects. <laughs> but not everybody got four. And if I don't use it, I'll just sash it. <laughs> so anyways, this is a really pretty color um, from Hello Yarn. Oh, um, BFL. So that was the only thing. I was hoping it would be more of like a superwash BFL or a BFL nylon, but it's just straight BFL, which I love working with. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful stuff, um, but it just limits which projects I would use it for. Yeah. So I think BFL is a really good fiber for beginners. To spin very, up. very good for beginners because it's got a little bit longer staple length mm -hmm. than like a merino, mm -hmm. but it drafts nicely. Yeah. It's it's not and it's not a coarse wool. Mm -hmm. it's, and this is the last thing. It's it's a spoiler. So, if you don't want to see the Into the World June colorway... I didn't want to see it. It's, Ju it's July now. <laughs> Today's you July. You didn't warn me. I'm no. sorry. <laughs> I, I, I'm just kidding. I don't care. <laughs> if you don't want to see it, look away. That just reminded me, though. It's halfway through July almost, which means we should get a new color soon. I know. I love her stuff. Mm -hmm. I really, really do. And um, this month, I'm going to tell you before I show you, just in case you want to run away now. Um, this, the luxury blend this month, because she has a luxe club and a, a classic club. And the luxe club has more where um, a lot of times we get silk blended in or sometimes cashmere. Sometimes it'll be, you know, other fibers. This time it's 50% alpaca, 30% merino, and 20% silk. Nice. Well, I don't really like alpaca usually. <laughs> well, I did. I, when I saw that's what the blend was going to be, I'm like, oh, it's alpaca. I just don't. I don't care to knit with it very much, mm -hmm. but holy cow, that's nice. <laughs> this braid, oh my gosh, mm -hmm. look away if you don't want to see. <laughs> I know, it's too late. Yeah. But look at, I mean, her colors are fabulous anyways, and then, oh, it's like this, it's the orange and the blue from the, mm -hmm. the Motor Lodge, my mm -hmm. socks, but then she added in this like coral mm -hmm. reddish color. I love, it's called Sentinel. I don't remember, I think, I don't remember what the inspiration photo was, but I really can't wait to spin mm -hmm. this. Even though it's alpaca, I think it's going to spin up nicely. I think adding that merino and the silk to it mm -hmm. has made it a, a really nice blend. The thing I don't like about alpaca, it's really, it doesn't have any stretch to it. Well, you know there's two different kinds of alpaca. There's Surrey alpaca and mm -hmm. then Hoakaya alpaca. Right, right. And you know, the Surrey is more like a mohair type. You know, right, I really don't like working yeah. with that. And then, and then if it's, you know, baby alpaca, it's wonderful stuff. I've got a soft spot, soft spot for alpaca because years ago when I first started spinning, I, um, I met someone online and she was, she had a bunch of bunch of alpaca fiber and she was like, yeah, I'll send you some. And she's like, just pay me for shipping. So I'm like, okay, I'm expecting you know, like a, a mailer of alpaca fiber. No, it was this huge <laughs> box, probably 20 or 30 pounds oh gosh, of crazy. alpaca. And there were all different kinds of colors. There were baby alpacas and Surrey alpacas. And one of them was a, it was a hoakaya. That's how you say it. Right? Okay. Yeah. I don't know. It was, <laughs> it was a hoakaya breed but the fiber length was like this it was ridiculous it was you would think it was surrey because surrey how, surrey fiber is really long how long did they go before sharing that out? usually you know but it was crazy long and i tried i had a drum carter and i tried carding it and it just wrapped around the drum carter that was a total fail but yeah, yeah I, no. I have a soft spot for i've got some I've got a half-finished project up there of alpaca that I spun straight from the fleece. It was a dirty fleece, and I oh. spun it straight from it, and it was fantastic. I loved it. I think my problem is that it doesn't. It's not very elastic, and the one time I spun it, it was like 
it wasn't bad to spin. I mean, it drafted beautifully, and it was fine to work with. But then I had to knit up a sample, mm -hmm. and I just didn't like the way that it mm -hmm. knit. But that's that's just me. That's, you know, people, different people like mm -hmm. different fibers. But I think with this merino and silk mixed in, it's mm -hmm. going to have just enough yeah. spring to it that it's going to be lovely to work with. And then, you know, this, her, her club fibers are not braided. They're just... They come in the bag, just kind of put in there. And part of the reason for that is so they don't get compressed in a braid. Um, but then if you order from a regular or like a regular update, mm -hmm. they're braided. Mm -hmm. And they take up half the space of this bag mm -hmm. because they're compressed. It's just this the one, way it is. You can see, yeah. you can almost see the the separate rovings in rovings. it. Yeah. So see how easy that's, and I am going to spit, split this down mm -hmm. and spin it fine because mm -hmm. that's what it's telling me it wants. It's going to be wonderful. Yeah, I just, I I know a lot of people don't like alpaca, but I don't know. I'm just glad they don't have an allergy to it. I know mm -hmm. some people have, like, an allergy, and mm -hmm. it's pretty nasty, and you got to make sure to stay Remember away. Remember when we went to that alpaca show, yeah. and the lady was like, people aren't allergic to alpaca. Yes, they are. <laughs> some people are. <laughs> yeah. But, yep, that's all I have mm -hmm. for stash enhancements. That's all I have. Okay. Well, we just have a couple more things. I wanted to talk really quickly about, um... This new book that I got, it just showed up today, actually, so I haven't had a chance to look at it very much. It is New Vintage Lace um, by Andrea Jergrau. I know I'm butchering that. Um, there are a lot of lace patterns, lace books out there, but the reason I wanted to talk about this one specifically and the reason I purchased this one, even though I've got a ton of lace projects, uh, there's a lot of really good information beyond just the stitch, uh, this the, the designs in this book. Um, it's great photographs, but she has a whole first chapters about materials, and it's not just yarn. You know, it's not just yarn recommendations. It's beads and um, steel crochet hooks that you can use for beading, and then she has a whole other section, another beautiful photo, on techniques, and um, the techniques are different cast-ons and um, uh, decreases, increases in lace. So it's it's a really well-rounded book. That's a good tip there, joining in Oh, lace. see, yeah, there's a whole area here on joining yarn. I don't want to show too much because I'm sure the publisher would prefer that you actually get the book. Mm -hmm. But but that's um, a good tip because when you have to join a ball of yarn in lace, sometimes it's tricky to make it hide because lace is so open. Exactly, exactly. And so they talk about Russian joins, split splicing, spit splicing. I never say that right. Um, seaming lace, special, you know, stitches. And, and you will find that in other books. But the other thing that they did that I really like, she has a whole chapter about swatching for your lace. And a lot of times... People will say, well, it's not important to swatch for your lace because gauge doesn't matter. But actually, um, she goes into the method of doing a triangular swatch, like an actual triangular swatch and a um, circular swatch. But this is, I think, great right here. She shows when you swatch, you can kind of see how different types of yarn react to lace color work. And one of the things, you know, I know I have fallen prey to is this right here. Can you see the little, no, I got it too high. Where there is a lot of tonal difference in the yarn, you know, dark to light. And it really distracts from the mm -hmm. lace work. And I, I knit a whole shawl and then I blocked it. This was early on. Um, I blocked it and I was like, where's the lace? Mm -hmm. You can't see it because it's so disrupted. Mm -hmm. But she shows the different types of yarn and how they will affect lace. Um, so anyways, that was that. Uh, and then she has throughout here, you know, a lot of times you see a book like this with a cover like this and you think shawls. Mm -hmm. It's entirely shawls. It's not. She has this adorable little beanie cap. I guess everything was um, inspired by doilies. Mm -hmm. So kind of your vintage style lace but she made it into other projects now this is a shawl that I think is absolutely gorgeous um, there was a stole that I don't know if I marked it in here um, but there was a stole that was done where the, the most of the stole was very basic and then just the edging was was really fancy edging um, this is another shawl 
but she had a couple hats in there and a mm -hmm. couple stoles. Um, and this one's really cool. It's a wrap, but see how it is different octagons, or no, those aren't octagons, those are hexagons. hexagons. Sorry, different hex hexagons of lace, and then they are um, stitched together. I'm thinking that's going to be perfect for hand spun. Mm -hmm. Because if you have that hand spun that you really want to show off the color transitions, um, what will happen when you do like a full shawl is as you get further and further into your shawl, each color starts turning into like one or two mm -hmm. rows, and then it switches kind of to the yeah. next color. But if you do a wrap like this, it's going to be really pretty going through those color transitions um, as your yarn changes. That would also be fun to, to use leftover yarn for. Oh yeah. Do each one different. Mm-hmm. And you could do smaller ones um, and make more of a, you know, a blanket like mm -hmm. a lot of people are doing with the... Hexi the, puffs. Yeah, hexi puffs and... Yeah, but, you know, this is a really well-rounded book, but the thing that to me makes it valuable is that it's not just patterns, it's that it's a really good resource as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nice patterns in here. I was, there it is. That's the, that stole that she was talking about. Yeah, and see, I think the stole part would knit up really fast. And then it's got that beautiful edge. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly what shows anyways, because usually mm -hmm. the rest goes around your neck. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited about trying that out someday down the road when I finish some projects. <laughs> it's a good book. Yeah, so anyways, I just want to talk a little bit about that. It is New Vintage Lace by Andrea Jurgrau, I guess. How would you say that? Jurgrau? <laughs> I'm sorry for butchering your name. It's a good it's book. It's a great though. book. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... Do you want to do upcoming events and then I'll do my little public service announcement? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Why don't you, you want to talk about that? No, go ahead. Oh, you know, you know more about it. I got invited two days ago. <laughs> well, pretty much um, tomorrow we're going to be heading down. We're up near Jacksonville in Florida. And uh, tomorrow we're going to be heading down to Gainesville to meet up with a couple other spinners. Quite a few of them are support spindler, spindlers, so I'm excited to get with them because I'm very limited in my knowledge on support spindling. And As am I. We're looking More to get so. some great <laughs> pointers from then, maybe. And then um, we're all just kind of through together this get-together, and there's um, going to be uh, some some people there like uh, I, I don't want to say for sure who's gonna be there because we will have to wait and see but I'm gonna bring the camera with me and I might try to get a little tidbit here and there so hopefully we'll have that to share next time mm -hmm. and then afterwards we're going to the most incredible ice cream shop on the planet and getting ice cream yeah I don't even like ice cream and I go to this place it's sweet dreams in Gainesville yes and if you're ever in Gainesville <clears throat> you need to go there once a year I think they do a chocolate event I think where it's like quarterly almost. Or, yeah. We've been there a couple times. They do a chocolate event. They're not doing the chocolate event tomorrow, but I don't think so. I'm going to look at that. We'll see. But they, they make all, it's all chocolate ice cream, but they're all different flavors of chocolate. And we're not talking about, you know, like Rocky Road or, you know, milk chocolate, dark chocolate. We're talking about lavender chocolate and beer chocolate and they did Mayan dance. spice chocolate I and that one. I like the spice. lavender chocolate that one was so good it was good I was surprised mm -hmm. how much I liked that that combination but crazy combinations and of course peanut butter chocolate and they're and cherry all chocolate they're all made in-house they're all and the best thing when you go for the chocolate day is there's literally a line out the door mm -hmm. and they hand you was it like 60 flavors yeah they hand you the listing of all the flavors you've got this little you know sheet and they don't do full scoops that day. Mm -hmm. Instead, they do these little baby scoops. And you can have either two scoops, four scoops, six, ten. Some people get like 20 and 30 scoops and then share it with mm -hmm. people. Um, but you just go through on the paper and you check off, you know, I want to try this one, this one, this one, this one. And I think I got like six scoops last mm -hmm. time, little baby scoops. And um, then you just hand them the sheet when you get to the counter mm -hmm. and they put them all together it goes like clockwork yeah and you get to try all these different flavors mm -hmm. of chocolate mm -hmm. ice cream delicious stuff anyway I'm sorry we're not we're oh, not yeah. bra we're not bragging but this that is, is what we're doing show. tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> but we're spinning first <laughs> and gonna be knitting I'm hoping mm -hmm. to get um, the gauge swatch done for my 
hand spun cardigan mm -hmm. and maybe be knitting on that tomorrow. Well, so I hope to get this spinning done as soon as I can. That will be awesome. Although we're all caught up with Game of Thrones, I don't know what I'm going to watch. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Who? I'm not interested. I don't know. Firefly? <laughs> nah. I can't no. convince her. No. That's a good segue, though, to my public service announcement. Yep, it is. I have a public service announcement about Tea Fury. I really, I've been hiding it mostly with my hair. I'm a big Firefly fan, and I saw this shirt. This is, you probably can't see it very well. Let me see. I want to show you. Well, anyways, there's my shirt. And it says Kaylee's Shiny Spacecraft Repair, because Kaylee is the engineer on Serenity, which is the spaceship from Firefly. And I got this and a couple other nerdy girl shirts. Um, you know, time to net, let your nerd flag fly mm -hmm. kind of thing. And I was really excited about these. I got this shirt. I got a Doctor Who and Little Mermaid shirt mm -hmm. in one shirt. And then I got Coffee Powers Activated one. Mm -hmm. It's really happy. So my shirts show up. And I pick them up out of the bag and I show my husband. I'm like, this is a 3X. And he looked at it and he cocked his head to the side and he went, does it say 3X on this shirt? Because I got a 3X. I paid $2 extra to get a 3X because, you know, I wanted a roomy shirt. So, oh, are you bringing up the chart? I have it here. No, I was going to bring up the picture. Oh, the okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. Bring up that picture. Okay. Is that Actually, on Instagram? It's this shirt that she wore. I think it is on Instagram. Okay. So... He looked at it and he's like, does it say 3X on the label? And sure enough, it does say it is the 3X. Well, the, what she's looking at is, I'm like, this is insane. I put the shirt on and I don't know if you can tell or not, but it is incredibly tight on me. And so I had my daughter, who wears a size medium normally, if she wants it to be close fitting, or a large, if she wants it to be normal fitting, um, I had her put on this shirt, and Kristen brought up the picture, so I have to show you. So this is my 18-year-old teenage daughter wearing this shirt, and as you can see, it fits pretty well. That's a normal size shirt. <laughs> that is a normal size shirt. So I decided to look up T-Furies, and sorry for going off on this tangent, but people need to know. <laughs> I looked up T-Furies size chart, and you're going to love this. I'm zooming in on the women's and the youth. Because you need to see this. All right. So, let's see if it'll... If you look closely, the yellow is the women's sizes, and the pink is the youth sizes. So, you look at the... the And this these, by the way, these measurements are measured as the shirt is laying flat. So, it's only, you know, half the total measurement. But, as you can see, for example, the size small. Is 15.75 inches across in the women's size. And if you look right next to that in the youth sizes, it's 15 inches across, which by their estimation is a size, I believe, six to seven. Yes, a size six to seven in youth sizes. So according to their sizing chart, a woman who wears a small would also fit in a six year old's t shirt. <laughs> The women who are a size extra large, okay, extra large is 18.75 inches across. Right next to that is the youth size 10 to 12, which is 18 inches across. So ladies of America, according to T Fury, if you wear an extra large, you are the size of a 10 to 12 year old. Not so much. So just be aware of that. Not for us normal sized women no, anyway. I'm kidding. <laughs> so look at the size charts. I'll order regular adult t shirts next time. Even then. I tell you where I got my tea, but I forgot where I got this tea. <laughs> it's Dora. Dory. <laughs> oh Dory. Sorry, I'm calling her Dora, sorry. I don't really forget, but I forgot where I got this tea. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Very cool. I got it at Disney World. No, you forgot. I forgot. <laughs> Well, I think that's all we really have. Yeah. We'll have that's more good. to talk about mm -hmm. next time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully about our lovely little trip down to Gainesville. Who's driving? You are. Okay, I'm driving. She We're likes to drive. a mini adventure. She likes to drive more than I do. I do. So. 
<laughs> and we both have convertibles, so it doesn't matter. We can go in either one. Right. Cool. All right. Well, we'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching. And uh, check out the group on Ravelry, Cottage Industry Fibers Podcast. And I'd uh, love to hear what you're working on. Which reminds me, um, real quick, there's a way that you can share your projects and your stash and everything with the group. Go in there and do that. I'd love to see what you guys are working on, what you're stashing. You know, we can always uh, use some extra evil enablers in our life. So I look forward to see what you guys are up to. See you next time. Bye. Bye.